Hello, and welcome to Zap the Gender Pay Gap, the podcast series where we expose the elephant in the room. The elephant's name, the gender pay gap. I am coming to you from Memphis, Tennessee, located on the banks of the mighty Mississippi River. Nestled in the southwest corner of the state, Memphis is home to the blues, barbecue, and so much more. I am your host, Gwendolyn Tucker. Thank you so very much for joining me for this episode of Zap the Gender Pay Gap. I am your host, Gwendolyn Tucker. I created this podcast series to do three things. One, to expose the elephant in the room, to make it visible by uncovering it, and to reveal its true nature. Two, to disclose some pertinent facts about this elephant that may have been previously unknown to you or made secret. And then three, to determine how to dispose of the effects of this elephant in the room. On today's episode, I will share how some history makers are disposing of the effects of this elephant in the room. History makers who are showing women in the workplace how to make history. These women are game changers. They are history makers. They are rain makers. They are leading the way in showing women how to make a night and day difference by addressing the gender pay gap. In a previous episode, I shared five alarming facts about the gender pay gap. One is that the female to male earnings ratio is 82%, which means that the gap is approximately 18%. The pay gap, it varies by age. It's larger for women of color. It varies by state and it also varies widely by occupation. Now, Ellen Cranley, an associate editor at Insider, wrote an excellent article about 12 surprising women from history who paved the road to equal pay. This article was published in Business Insider. If you want to read it, I'll drop a link to it in the box below. It's well worth the read. In the article, Ellen states that a lot of progress has been made, but there is still more to fight for. I would say so. Dating back to 1979, the earliest date for which pay data by gender was recorded, the female to male earnings ratio was guess what it was, 62%, which means that the gender pay gap was 38%. Fast forward to today, and the female to male earnings ratio is hovering around 82%, which means that the average gender pay gap is 18%. Definitely better, but not equal. Women have certainly made strides in closing the gap from 82%. It definitely is a far cry from 62%, but it's still unequal. Based on my research, the ratio has been hovering between 80 to 83% since 2004. Let that sink in. That's almost 20 years. And it costs women thousands of dollars every year, not only during their working years, but well into retirement. (laughs) If you recall last week's episode, I shared about the work Dr. Evelyn Murphy is doing to eliminate the wage gap. In her book, Getting Even, Why Women Don't Get Paid Like Men and What to Do About It, Dr. Murphy confirms that the gender pay gap still affects the daily life of women throughout the country at every economic level from cashier to CEO. She also examines how much women and their families lose over a lifetime to the wage gap. In 2005, when the book was published, Dr. Murphy estimated that a woman will lose between $700,000 and $2 million in her lifetime. Dr. Murphy asked this question, is it fair? No. She also asked another question. Can it be stopped? The reply, absolutely. 
In last week's episode, I asked this question. What if we had more women like Dr. Murphy advocating for equal pay for equal work? Women who are on a mission to zap the gender pay gap, showing women how to increase their take-home pay. Well, guess what? Ellen Cranley, in her article, brings women in politics, entertainment, and social justice to center stage. She states that these women have contributed to the decades of pay parity's progress so far, many of whom you probably didn't learn about in school and some who might surprise you. One such pioneer and history maker is attorney and political activist, Florence Kennedy. Florence or Flo Kennedy fought sexist and racist policies in and out of the workplace. She became one of Columbia Law School's first Black female graduates in 1951. Another history maker is Esther Peterson, who was presidential advisor to President John F. Kennedy. Her work was instrumental in passing the Equal Pay Act of 1963. That was almost 50 years ago, and women are still underpaid. Here's a name you may recognize. She's so famous, she's known by her first name, Beyonce. As Ellen Cranley states in her article, Beyonce was one of the first celebrities to use her star power to promote equal pay. She pulls a direct quote from Beyonce's interview with GQ. You know, equality is a myth. And for some reason, everyone accepts the fact that women don't make as much as men do. I don't understand that, Beyonce said. Why do we have to take a back seat? Beyonce has also called for men to join in the push for equal pay, writing that unless women and men both say this is unacceptable, things will not change. If we do nothing, things definitely will not change. The elephant in the room whose name is the gender pay gap will continue to stick its trunk into a woman's payday and affect her financial well-being, not only now, but well into the future. It takes two to tango, and it will take at least two to push this elephant out the door, men and women. My goal is to empower women to zap their gender pay gap, to go after their fortune, that which is rightfully theirs, I always say that going after your fortune requires three things. I like this formula. Fortune equals F to the third power. Faith. That it, it's worth it, but more importantly, that you're worth it. Two, fortitude. A certain fearlessness and fierceness to go after that which is rightfully yours. And then, of course, facts. Because feelings just won't do. You will need data and evidence to back up your case. So to go after your fortune, you will need three things. You will need confidence, you will need courage, and you will need the data that confirms that this is due you. But wait, there's so much more uh, that we don't have adequate time to share contributions from all the women in, in the article on this episode. So please join me next week as we celebrate the contributions of women like Southern Bell employee, Lorena Weeks, or activist Re Reverend Addie L. Watts, and Representative Rosa DeLora, Walmart employee, Betty Dukes, Goodyear employee, Lily Ledbetter. And I definitely cannot end this episode without giving a huge thank you to Ellen Cranley for writing this article to highlight 12 surprising women from history who paved the road to equal pay. Now it's our job to get on that road and drive this elephant out of the region. Plan to join me next Wednesday at noon Central Standard Time for the next episode of Zap the Gender Pay Gap as we continue to celebrate women from history who paved the road for equal pay.